Hey guys, in this video the brilliant Mr B is going to be looking at gradients. Now this is going to be suitable for your further maths GCSE or if you want to get a bit of a head start over the summer in preparation for your A level maths. There are nine different questions here, work through at three different levels. You can look at the pinned comment down below to see where each different level starts. You can work through the example following Mr B as he goes along and then if you want to see if you've properly understood everything over on my website there are thousands more questions waiting for you. We are going to have a look at the gradients of straight lines and with the gradient of a straight line they are always written in the same format and that format is y equals mx plus c. Now there's a few things to talk about with this. The first thing is the m. Now the m is the most important thing for this because this is the gradient m represents the gradient. Another important part of this is the plus c. Now the plus c represents the y-intercept. That is where the line crosses over the y-axis. And we're going to figure out the equations of the lines without actually looking at the graphs. We won't be able to visually look at where the line crosses the y-axis to get the y-intercept. So we have to figure it out using other methods. So let's have a look what we've been given. We need to find the equation of the line which passes through the point a5 and it has a gradient of a half. So straight away we're going to write down the format we always write down y equals mx plus c and we know that the gradient is going to be a half because we've been directly told that in the question. So we'll swap m for a half. So so far we have y is equal to a half x plus c. Now to work out the plus c pair what we need to do is figure out y and x there and we have values for y and x. We have the 8 and the 5. So with coordinates the first one will be the x value and the second one is the y value. So all we need to do now is swap y and x for those values. So y is 5 and x is 8. So the equation should read y is equal to a half x plus c. With the y swapped with 5 and the x swapped with 8. And remember when you've got two letters next to each other like with the m and the x they are being multiplied together. So all we need to do now is solve the equation. Now the first thing to do is let's simplify it. We've got a half times eight. So what are eight halves? Eight halves make four whole ones. So we've got five is equal to four plus c. Then solve the equation. So we can take away four from each side. And that will leave us with one is equal to c. So now we know what the y-intercept is. This line is going to cross over the y-axis at one. All that's left now is to write down our final answer. So our final answer, again in the format y equals mx plus c, will be y is equal to a half x, so m, the gradient is a half, plus 1, because the gradient c was found to be 1. So moving on to our next example, we're going to find the equation of another straight line. So always write down the basic format of the equation of a straight line to start off. y equals mx plus c and read through the question and try and identify things we can substitute in. So for example, we are told straight away that the gradient is 4, so we can swap the m with a 4. That leaves us with y is equal to 4x plus c. Now we need to find out what the plus c is. We're not told it in the question. We don't have a graph to read the y-intercept of, because if you had this drawn on the graph, it would be as simple as just looking at a line and seeing where it crosses over the y-axis, and we don't have that. What we can do is we have values of x and y. x is 4 and y is 9. So let's substitute those in. Now that's going to leave us with y is equal to 4 multiplied by x plus c. And now we have an equation for this we can set to simplify it. So we've got a 4 times 4, that'll give us 16. So 9 is equal to 16 plus c. Well we need to get the plus c on its own so we can figure out what it is. So let's take away 16 from both sides. And 9 take away 16, that's going to give us 7. 16 take away 16 is 0, that's how we did it, and we've got the c left over. So the y-intercept c is going to be, it's going to be a negative 7 actually, because 9 take away 16 is negative 7. Our last step is just to write it out in full. So our final equation is y is equal to 4x take away 7. So there's a final answer that has the gradient and the y-intercept clearly shown. 
in the usual format you write these out y equals mx plus c moving on to the next example again we find the equation of a straight line so we write down y is going to be equal to mx plus c and we can find the gradient in the question for this as well the gradient is negative a third so we can swap m with negative one third leaving us y is equal to negative a third x plus c so now we've got the gradient we need to find out what the y-intercept is now we have x values we've got the nine and y values the negative four so we can substitute those in swapping y for negative four and swapping x for nine that gives us negative four is equal to negative a third times nine plus c now we have our equation with only one unknown because to solve the equation first we want to simplify the negative third times nine now when you multiply a fraction by a whole number you just multiply the numerator by the whole number so that's going to give us negative four is equal to it'll be negative nine thirds plus c we think about it one third times nine is going to be nine lots of one third which is nine thirds and actually you can do that nine thirds that's nine divided by three and you can do that nine divided by three is three isn't it so let's get rid of that and swap it with a three so now we can solve the equation we want c on its own it's got negative three with it so let's add three to both sides so negative four plus three is going to give us negative one negative plus three plus three is going to cancel out that's why we did it and then we have the c on its own so we know that the y-intercept is at negative one. The line is going to cross the y-axis at negative one. All we need to do at the end is write down our final equation, which would be y is equal to mx plus c. And so I swap the m with negative a third, and I swap the plus c with our negative one. So the equation of the line is y equals negative a third x take away one. Moving on to the medium questions, again it says find the equation of a straight line, so we need to write down y is equal to mx plus c. But then we read through and try and find what the gradient is, we've got a point the line passes through again, so that means we've got an x and a y coordinate that we can use, but we haven't been told what the gradient is. But what we have been told is that it's parallel to another line. Now, when you have a parallel line, a little thing about parallel lines is that they have the same gradient so if parallel lines are the same gradient what is the gradient of the other line we were given well it's got a gradient of negative five so that is going to be the gradient of our line so we can swap x with negative five that will give us y is equal to negative five x plus c all that's left now is to do what we did with the easy questions and substitute in values of y and x with y being negative three and x being negative one. Altogether, that's y is equal to mx plus c. So now we have an equation. We can work at the multiplication. Negative five multiplied by negative one will be a positive five. Negative times negative is a positive. The rest is going to remain the same. And now we can solve the equation. So let's take away five from both sides, get c on its own. And negative three take away five will give us negative eight. 5 taken by 5 is 0, that's why we did it, and we have the C. Then we write down our final answer, y equals mx plus c. So that'd be y is equal to the m was negative 5x, and the plus c is going to be a negative 8. And that is our final answer. For the next question, again, we'll find the equation of a straight line. So it's going to be y is equal to mx plus c. Let's have a look what we have. So we've given uh, the line passes through 0, 6. So that's an x and a y coordinate with no on the line. We can use that to substitute later. We need to find the gradient. And again, we're told it's parallel. And it's parallel to y equals negative a third x plus 8. So parallel lines have the same gradient. So negative a third is going to be our gradient. Now, this time, speed things up. Let's substitute everything all together. So we know that y is 6. We have 6 is equal to... Then we have the m the gradient, which is negative one third. Then we have x, which is zero. And then we have the plus c. Then we need to work out the multiplication first. We have negative a third multiplied by zero. Well, anything multiplied by zero is going to give us zero. So we'll end up with six is equal to zero plus c. And you know, how do we rearrange the equation here? Well, we don't need to because zero doesn't have a value. We can just leave it out. That gives us six is equal to c. 
So when you have zero as an X value, it makes it a little bit easier because then you don't need to deal with multiplying it by the gradient. You get your answer straight away. If you think about it, this is the Y intercept. And if you have the Y intercept with a line crossing over the Y axis, what's the X value on the Y axis? It's zero. So if you're given a coordinate where X is zero, you know that the corresponding Y value is going to be exactly the point where the line crosses the Y axis. So it makes sense that C will be equal to six. So all we need to do now is write down our final answer. Again, in the format Y equals MX plus C, and it would be Y is equal to negative a third X plus C, C is six. Now we're going to do one more parallel example before we move on to something a little bit more difficult. So again, we find the equation of a straight line, Y is equal to MX plus C. Look through for the information you can find. We can find our X and Y coordinates. We can find the gradient that's parallel. So we have the same gradient as Y equals 4X plus 11. So the gradient's going to be 4. And then substitute everything in. Swapping the Y for 9. Swapping the M for 4. Swapping the X for 4. And then we have the plus C, which we're trying to find. Simplify what you can. Well, 4 times 4 is 16. So we have 9 is equal to 16 plus C. And then rearrange to get C on its own. We're going to have to take away 16 from both sides. So 9 take away 16 is going to be negative 7. So the gradient is going to be negative 7. So all we need to do is write the final answer. y is equal to mx plus c, which would be y is equal to 4x take away 7. Now looking at the hard questions, it starts off looking very similar to the previous questions. We'd find the equation of a straight line, which would be y is equal to mx plus c. We have a point it passes through, which we can use substituting values of x and y. And then we have a statement about the gradient, but this time it says perpendicular. Now, previously it said parallel, and parallel meant the same gradient, but this means perpendicular to the gradient one fifth in the line y equals the fifth x plus 15. So what does perpendicular mean? Now, when it says perpendicular, this means you find the negative reciprocal. And perpendicular, it's also referring to, you think about the shape of a graph, your regular line, and it's going to sketch a line here, it might look like this. The perpendicular line would go through it at a right angle. So perpendicular can also mean at a right angle. So we can't just copy the gradient. It's going to be a completely different gradient. But there is a relationship between them. And as I said, it's a negative reciprocal. So what does that mean? Well, negative reciprocal just means flip the fraction upside down. So if you have the fraction one fifth, then the negative reciprocal is the fraction upside down. And of course, the sign is going to flip. We'll have a negative sign. And what's five divided by one? Well, it's just five, isn't it? So we can just have negative five as a negative reciprocal. So again, if you see the phrase negative reciprocal, what you are going to do is you're going to flip the fraction upside down and you're going to change the sign. It's positive, it's going to become negative. That's why it's called the negative reciprocal. So now we know that we can substitute in. We have a value for y, it's nine. We have a value for m, the gradient, it's negative five. And you can see there's a bit more effort to work it out this time, isn't there? We're not just copying it. Then we have a value for x, it's negative three. And we're adding on c, which is what we're trying to find. So now we can simplify and solve the equation. Simplifying first, negative five times negative three will give us a positive 15 with a negative multiplied by a negative, giving us a positive. That means that nine is equal to 15 plus C. Then we can rearrange to get a C on its own. So we can take 15 away from both sides. So nine take away 15 is going to be negative six. 15 take away 15 is zero. That's why we chose it to cancel them out. And we have the C left over. So C is equal to negative six. All we need to do now is write down our final answer. So Y is equal to MX plus C. That means it's Y is equal to negative five X take away six. The next question works the same way. So we'll find the equation of a line. So Y equals MX plus C. For a straight line, we have X and Y values to substitute in for a point that lies on the line. And we have a statement about the gradient. It's perpendicular to the gradient, a half. So how do we work that out? Well, we've got a half 
and we need to find the negative reciprocal. So just flip it upside down. A half becomes two over one. Again, a positive is going to become a negative. Then have a think about it. Well, negative two over one, two divided by one is going to be just two. So we can simplify it to negative two. You can think about it like this whole numbers uh, are fractions with one as the denominator. So let's substitute. We know that y is five. We know that m is negative two. We know that x is negative three. And we've got the plus c. So simplify what you can. Well, we've got a negative two times negative three, which will be a positive six. So five is going to be equal to six plus c. So let's solve the equation. We can take six away from both sides. Five take away six is negative one. Six take away six is zero. Again, that's why we chose it to cancel them out. And we have the plus c. So that c is equal to negative one. So now just write down your final answer. Y is equal to mx plus c, which would be y is equal to negative two x minus one. So now for the last example, again, we we'll find the equation of a straight line. Y equals mx plus c. And I've said this so many times now, you should be remembering this really, really thoroughly. We have some points to substitute. We have a point on a line for a negative five. So there are x and y coordinates. And we have a statement about the gradient. Uh, we are perpendicular to y is equal to negative 4x plus 10. So negative 4 is the gradient of the perpendicular line. So what we need to do is flip the fraction upside down. Now you'll notice this is not a fraction. So how do we cope with it? Well, like I said in the last question, whole numbers can be thought of as fractions over 1. So we could write negative 4 as negative 4 over 1. And now it's a fraction we can flip upside down. And the act of flipping a fraction upside down is what we call the reciprocal. So the reciprocal of four is a quarter. The other thing to consider is this is the negative reciprocal we're trying to find. Now we started off negative in the first place. So really you can think of it rather than negative reciprocal, you think about flipping the sign as well. So negative four is becoming a positive one quarter. Another way to think about it is that if you make it negative, if it's already negative, and you make it negative again, that's a double negative. And a double negative will cancel out to give you a positive. So now let's substitute. So we have a value for y, negative five. We have a value for the gradient, it's one quarter. We have a value for x, it's four. And we're looking for the c. So let's simplify what you can. Well, with the fraction, one quarter times four will be four quarters. And four quarters is a whole one. So we have negative 5 is equal to 1 plus c. And then we just need to solve the equation. Take 1 away from both sides to do that. Negative 5 take away 1 will give us negative 6. 1 take away 1 is 0, so it's cancelled out, and we've got the c. So the y-intercept is negative 6. Let's write out the final answer. y is equal to mx plus c, which corresponds to y is equal to a quarter x take away 6.